Hi guys, it's Kelly here. I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Adore Stamps and Dies, the um, Scallop Honey Cuts, the Heart Stack Honey Cuts, and then these Antique Layering Roses. Um, you know I never use anything the way that it's supposed to be used. <laughs> so I really love, um, part of the new release was this Hello Sweetheart set, and I actually used that in a video um, that we did for the release. I used the stencils and then the stamp and I totally love it. And when I sat down to make my card, I was like, I would love to be able to use that again, but I just used it. Um, so I was like, maybe I can make my own flower heart. I haven't used those roses yet. So that's kind of where the idea came from. So I traced out, the reason I traced out my die was so I would know where to stamp. And then here I'm just getting in my die cut into position um, for when I cut it out. And I'm just going to kind of move that over to the side. And then I'm going to create some masks for my roses. You could certainly um, kind of stack these up and have a like abundance of dimension. But I wanted, I knew I was going to have some dimension on my card just because of the layout that I had kind of dreamed up but I wanted the heart portion of it to be flat. So I'm going to be doing some masking. I'm using my Eclipse masking paper for this. Um, you can use whatever masking paper works for you, post-it notes or uh, a repositionable adhesive and copy paper because you know that's what I used to do. So just going to go ahead and trim all of those out. Um, I stamped two sets of everything. And then here on the white piece of paper where I, um, had traced my scalloped edge. I'm going to start doing my stamping. I am using the uh, intense black um, ink. What ink? Why did that word elude me? I don't know. The intense black ink from Honeybee Stamp, um, which is safe to use with alcohol-based markers. I will be coloring with my Copics. And then I just kind of started building from there. I knew I was going to fill up the whole image um, because I wanted to be able to see them in the background and then kind of spotlight um, or highlight uh, the colored portion of the roses but I needed something to fill up that background and so here they have a little bud that's included um, and it has the stem I didn't want to mask the stem and so I was going to see if I could do it without it but it really looks very strange without <laughs> without the stem so I needed it and I just kind of worked around it I didn't mask that one at all um, but when I said I don't use anything uh, like it's meant to be used, what I was referring to is I did not use the layering portion of this stamp. So it has an outline that's included. I only use the outline stamps for all of my stamping on this card. The layering of it is beautiful, but I like to color. And so I only used the outline so that I could color them the way that I would like to. Um, I do think that layering, like the color layering, would have been much faster. Um, but for me, it's just a little less enjoyable. I do think that it looks beautiful. And I know a lot of people do enjoy that type of stamping. So if that's for you, you could totally do the same thing without coloring any of these images and still create um, the same style of card. So like I said, just stamping and masking as we go. We're going to fill the whole thing up here in a minute. I'm going to speed it up um, just because it did take me a few minutes to kind of get everything into place. Stamp, mask, mask, stamp. You get what I'm saying. So um, the last time that we talked, we talked about how I would not survive the uh, days of old. My pioneer days, I wouldn't survive. Um, but there really wasn't anything... Like there was really no like family update. Um, I guess I could give you the rundown of what we're doing. Eric's officially back to work. I've told you that. Um, I go back at the end of the month and I am equal parts dreading it and looking forward to it um, because I don't really leave the house a whole lot uh, while being on maternity leave. I just kind of stay home like and it's COVID anyway. Like that's still running rampant everywhere. So I wouldn't be going out anyway. Um, but it is kind of nice to get out of the house every once in a while um, and work obviously provides that for me. Plus, I do find my job very fulfilling. Um, you know, 911 dispatch is obviously a very needed um, service and I always feel like I genuinely get to help somebody and so that gives me purpose. That's why I enjoy my job so much. Um, and actually, 
right now three of my co-workers are in the Virgin Islands because their dispatch center was so completely overrun with COVID. They did not have enough dispatchers to operate their um, just regular emergency communications. And so they did um, a basically like it's an emergency response team um, and they put out a call and there was about 10 dispatchers from northeast ohio that went down there to um, man their dispatch center while they're out sick so that's pretty cool um and then um what's going on with peanut so he's back to school they do have a mask mandate um in effect which he he never had any issue with last year so I'm not sure what's going on this year but he is complaining about having to wear a mask everybody has to wear a mask bro it's fine stop it you're gonna survive um and but he has decided to join um basketball so if you guys watch my channel you know that um peanut is not really into organized sports um he's tried lacrosse and that was about it we could never get him to really be into anything else and so when they sent the little flyer home that said that they were doing a, a basketball league, he shocked all of us and said he wanted to join. So I hurried up and went right up to the rec center to sign him up before he changed his mind. Um, so his first practice is on Monday. Um, and then I think he has like four practices and four games or eight practices and eight games. I'm not sure what it is, but... Um, I am excited to see him kind of go out there um, and maybe make some friends and learn some sportsmanship and things like that. So here I am putting my um, heart in place. I'm going to be honest with you. I put them in place, both of them, um, but I never double checked them and I should have because what I found was I ended up putting my regular heart a little too far in um, for it to line up with the scallop heart there is a way to fix it because you know I'm not starting over again I just did all that stamping did you see all that stamping I'm not redoing that that's insanity um, but I should have lined them up better so if you're doing something like this don't make my mistake and make sure you double check um, when you put them on there that it is still like that it lines up correctly I did not um, so anywho, I've cut out my highlighted portion. Here's where I realize it doesn't line up. See how my scallop heart is too far to the left? In order for it to be in the center of the other heart, I got to scooch it to the right, but then it doesn't match up as an A2 size card. Um, but that's okay. I figured it out. But I am going to color just the center portion. Um, I wanted to stick with just like a classic color combination. Uh, I went with red. I just went with red roses and um, like the red and the craft and the white. I always like that combination together. Here what I'm doing is I'm just mapping out where my colors need to be. So I'm going to use that other piece and please be careful like if you're doing this exact thing my intention is to leave that background piece white um, just black and white stamping so I have to be very careful not to get any color on it. But it's sometimes it's hard when you die cut through an image to know what pieces parts should be what color. And so that's why I'm doing this little color blocking scheme here. And I'm going to do the same thing with my leaves so I know um, where everything goes. So anywho, back to the update. So we're, we're excited to see him play some basketball um, and see how that goes for him. If maybe he's um, a bigger fan of organized sports after that. Um, but yeah, so otherwise he's he is doing good. He is still smitten with his sister. Um, in fact, my <laughs> my mother in law was here the other day, and she was um, she had just changed Caitlin's diaper, and to, uh, she went to go wash her hands in the kitchen. And the kitchen, the changing table, um, it's all open, like into my family room, so she could see them. She was like, you know, can you keep an eye on your sister for a minute? You know, just talk to her while I uh, go wash my hands. And he is talking to her and he like puts his hands up on both her cheeks and he's like, why are you so cute? <laughs> Which is adorable. Um, so he is still 100% smitten with her. He asked me to print out a picture um, of her so that he could take it to school with him. 
and so because he keeps talking about his little sister but he doesn't have a picture to show his friends so originally what he actually asked me for was if I would email his teacher a picture of Caitlin so that he could show his friends because my child does not understand that we have the capability of printing out pictures um you know since everything's digital now so I did print one out so that he could take it in and apparently he's just been carrying it around with him so we showed all his friends at school and then um I got a text from one of our neighbors that he plays with their um two kids and she was like oh Nathan showed me a picture of Caitlin and she's beautiful and it was just he's very sweet about it um and hopefully that continues because I know plenty of people have said like and even Eric his brother when his brother came home from the hospital he was like three days in was like can we take him back can we return him um so so far so good Nathan doesn't want to return her um as far as Caitlin goes she is her evenings are still the hardest time but it is for all babies I mean evenings just are a uh, a little bit harder she is sleeping pretty well through the night though so thank god for that and she takes really good morning naps it's just the evening I think she by the time that she gets to the evening she's kept herself up for so long she's overtired and she cannot get settled um so that is a little a little bit more challenging but we're working through it she just had her two month checkup can you believe it's been two months already I cannot and she weighs 10 pounds, four ounces. So she is kind of slow in the weight gain area, but she is still gaining, so nothing to be concerned about. And um, she's she got her vaccines, which is awful. Uh, oh my gosh, it's just the worst thing ever. Have, I mean, you do it because it's the best thing for them, and so we do it. But like the silent screaming that happens when they get their shots, oh, it just breaks your heart. Oh it's not fun Eric handles it much better than me but um he was like you should just stay home and I was like no I'm not gonna stay home I'm not gonna stay home I'm gonna go and I'm gonna witness this event and I'm gonna cry right along with her and then I'm gonna cuddle her and comfort her that's what's gonna happen uh and that is what happened <laughs> so we don't have to go back until we have a four month checkup so she's looking good everybody's doing well and um yeah that's pretty much what we have been doing around here lately just to touch on the coloring in case you're new um, to my videos and you haven't seen this before I always start with my dark or my lightest color and then work up to my darkest and then from my darkest back down to my lightest here when you're doing little um, the bigger petals are easier obviously you have more room to kind of move around when you're doing the smaller petals when you get to your darkest color don't think that you need to put a lot down you don't you just need to put like one little line down and that'll be enough to give you some dimension but still keep the highlighted portion of your petals um so that way it doesn't get mushy it doesn't get one color you don't lose that uh dimension you can literally just go in there and put like one little line of color don't even push down just kind of like brush the marker against it and don't don't even give it any pressure um and you can you know get some some really good dimension and then after I color this flower I'm going to do all the other ones off camera because I did them all the same exact way there wasn't really anything new to show you and because coloring takes so long this video was already um you know gonna be well it's my average time but it is a bit longer for most youtubers I understand you guys all have lives you want to get on with um, instead of hanging out with uh, me all day though I do appreciate you spending your precious time with me watching my videos um, but so yeah just gonna work back out to that lightest color where I will leave minimal highlight just like I put in a minimal shadow and then um, I'll do the same thing with the leaves I'll color a portion of it on the screen um, and then just kind of do the rest of them off camera because it's really nothing new to show you so the last time um, the last video I asked you about if you would want to see a comparison of a couple of different uh, glitter paste that I have and um, it seems like you guys would be interested in that so I will be doing that sometime here in the near future the other thing that I got for Christmas, which I'm super excited, I got to play with it just a little bit the other day, um, was I got the um, hot foil um, 
kit machine, the hot foil thing from Spellbinders. Um, and actually, Honeybee just uh, released some of their own uh, like foil plates. They're super cute. They're like little wax stamps. Um, so if you haven't seen those, go check them out. They're they're really cute. There's like a little envelope and some hearts and stuff. Um, and we'll have to see if I can incorporate that into a card at some point. Um, so yeah, wheels are always just turning for card ideas. Anybody else like that? Like I'm always, when I see new products or see, you know, new things that are out there, I always watch it for a little bit. Hot Foil has been out for quite a bit of time, um, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be my thing. Not everything is my thing. And I learned that very early on in card making, that not everything has to be my thing. See, when I started card making, the thing was shabby chic. It was like 600 layers, um, you know, mixed media, all of this like distressed and sanded and torn and ripped. And I would see other people's cards and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Why don't mine ever look like that? Mine don't look like that because that's not my thing. That's what happened. And that's okay. Clean and simple is my thing. A classic card style. Well, and really that's my style in life too. So it doesn't really surprise me. Um, but that's okay. Not everything is my thing. So I sit back and I watch and I see if maybe I will like the thing. And if I can incorporate that into my style of card making. And it took me a minute um, to figure out whether or not the hot foil would be. And I do see how you can use it in a clean and simple way. And how I would enjoy doing that. And so I asked for one for Christmas. And Eric actually, <laughs> I sent it to Eric and I sent it to my mom. And Eric was like, why you send me things that you send your mom? You know I'm not going to be able to buy them. And I was like... I did not know you would not be able to buy them. I sent them to both of you to ensure that I would be able to get it for Christmas. And he was like, yeah, you can't, if you send me things that you don't send your mom, because if you send them to your mom, your mom's going to buy them, um, which is funny. So I told her, if there's anything on the list that you did not get me, please forward it to Eric. <laughs> um, so here is where I'm going to have to fix this little misstep that I had. Um, and so it's more important to me that the card be lined up on the heart than the card be lined up on the edge. And so I put foam tape on the back of it and it took me a couple of tries. You can see here I'm struggling a little bit, but I was trying to get it where it was even around the heart and it was still lined up straight, um, which took me a few tries to get, but eventually I did get it. I was able to push it down. You can see that like piece part hanging off the left. Um, I'm not even worried about it. I'm, it's, I'm going to cut it off. That's what's going to happen. So I'm going to use my trimmer, my paper trimmer here, because it has the wire guide to line it up with the edge of that craft paper. And then I'm going to cut it because of the foam tape. It won't cut all the way through, but it's okay. I don't need it to. I can cut it the rest of the way with my scissors. I just needed the straight guideline um, for that part that's open. And so I'm just going to go through and cut that the rest of the way with my scissors. There's like this one sliver, <laughs> this one sliver of paper that's hanging on the side there. Um, but that's okay. So I'm going to add glue to that. And then I'm going to glue the whole thing down to my card base. And nobody will even know that it doesn't line up. Except for you fine folks who are watching this video. So once I have that down and it's lined up, I did have to kind of wiggle that little um, piece like on the edge there to get it to lie straight because it was so thin. Um, but once I had that down, then I'm going to go ahead and add foam to the heart portion. So the craft is popped up. The heart in the middle is popped up. The white, the black and white stamping is flat down to the card base. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, adds a little bit of interest to my focal point. And you could totally do this without letting it hang off the edge. Just so we're clear. If that looks like it's too much work, don't do it. It's totally fine. Just put it in the center of your card. Um, you know, pick a size of a heart that'll fit into the center of a card. I was just trying to make my background a little bit, my focal point a little bit more interesting. And I was really happy with the way that it came out. I like those colors together. I think that they're good classic colors. Here I am going to do the stamping for the rest of my sentiment. This says you friend, 
Um, so the adore part will be cut out in die cuts and then this little label is going to finish the sentiment. So it'll say adore you friend. Um, just because this is not the typical type of card that I would give my husband for Valentine's Day, namely because we don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, not that we don't love each other. We just don't do like the Hallmark holidays. So like here in um, Ohio, we have Sweetest Day. I don't even think that's a thing everywhere, but it's a thing up here and it's in October and we don't celebrate that either. Um, so I stamped that down after I used my um, anti-static brush and then um, I'm just going to heat set it in white. This is the same thing I always do, always and forever, black and white labels. <laughs> um, because I just like the way they look and it's super legible and it adds a little pop of color and so I like them. Here I'm these are the adore I'm going to cut the shadow out of black and then the actual word out of white and then I will just adhere them together. I did not I chose not to pop them up on foam um, just because everything else was kind of popped up on foam. So once I get them together, then I'm just going to add glue kind of like to the left and right hand side of them because it's going to, I don't need to put glue where I'm going to bridge the gap um, between the heart and the background. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, but yeah, so somebody had left a comment on one of my videos and they were like, love your videos, but could you say um less or how many times did you say um, something like that. And, uh, I do say it a lot because I don't pre, there's a lot of card makers who like script their voiceovers. Um, and I'm sure that probably makes them a ton more professional, but you know, professionalism is not what I'm shooting for. Realism. That's what I'm shooting for. And so if I say I'm a lot and I know I do, just please know it's because I'm just sitting here having conversation off the cuff and that gives my videos the feel that they have and I'm good with that. I that's I want it to feel like we're having conversations as friends because we're you know all in this same hobby together um, with these same things and interest and in, and I know that when I didn't have anybody to talk to about my crafting um, it made me sad like I was sad that I didn't have somebody I could share it with and so I get to share it with you guys and I'm very blessed to do that and I appreciate your time and the way that you let me just be me. So I'm gonna I added some little rhinestones to my sentiment and then I'm gonna add some clear glimmer to just the rose portion and then that's it that's the whole video. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, like I said I appreciate you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.